Hello and welcome back. In this video we will be adding water to our game world. So the water here is actually the main reason that we are not using the built-in functionality for drawing a tile map in Unity. Um, in Unity 2017.2 they added a tile editor or tile map um, that will allow you to draw tiles on the screen in a very easy way. And this tile map is uh, very very efficient when you need to make a 2D platform or something or make some uh, pathways and stuff. Um, and there was actually a couple of people on my channel that actually gave me a heads up about this uh, tile editor because they saw that I was going to generate some, some maps like this. So I've played around with this tile editor for a couple of hours and um, I can conclude that the way that we are going to use the water it will be easier for us to um, use that algorithm that I created um, to generate the water because it's going to be very complex to make um, the water with the new tile manager system. Um, and the reason of that is because in the tile editor that Unity has, you have to create your own palettes. And to make sure that this water works, we'll have to generate a very complex palette. And we'll have to use a lot of time drawing all the water on the screen every time we make a new map. So what we're going to do is that we will add the water to the screen exactly the same to the map exactly the same way as we're adding grass and then our function or our algorithm will calculate which kind of tile we need to place anywhere so when we have written the code we can simply just draw some blue colors on our map and it will use the right tiles for us so we will only use a few seconds generating a map with water instead of using minutes drawing in, uh, the correct sprites so maybe I don't know how to use the tile manager correctly, that one that Unity has. Maybe I don't know to use it efficiently because it's still new. Uh, but I think this way is very easy. And if you have some inputs about using the tile manager, you of course put them in the comments because maybe you find that easier. But uh, from my experience with those couple of hours I used it, I felt like our way is going to be better. So with that in place, we can start on the actual generation of the map. So we have our map here, and our water is going to be drawn on this one. So I am going to find it in the folder, and I'm going to open it with Photoshop. So open with, there, and Photoshop. And I'll close this one down again. So I am going to add some water to it. And basically, I'm going to use this yeah, blue color. It doesn't matter what color you use, but just copy that color you're selecting and go to Unity. Stop playing the game if you're playing it. And then we need to add another map. Yeah, 54. Uh, five, I guess I want to do. And this one is going to be called Water. And the color is going to be the one from Unity. And the element prefab. Well, I don't think I have a prefab yet. Nope. So I'm going to make a new prefab from water. And I'm going to use the standard water tile that is only blue. So I'll find my sprites, environment, and water tiles, and I'll take tile number 21. With that one, I can go to my prefabs environment and drag it in here. So I'm going to rename it water with non-capital A there and drag it in to my environment folder. With that done, I can select the level manager and take the water and drag it down there. Okay, so now it's set up. I can go back to this area here and I can start drawing some water. So when you draw the water now, it's very important to try to use some different shapes instead of just making like one square like this. Because we would like to test that everything is going to work, like all, all the angles. So maybe you can make something like a square that goes down there and something that goes up here and some to the side and up and some to that side and down and stuff and something like that right so try to make a, a shape that is not like totally um, rectangular or something just try to make like a very odd shape like this you can also do it over the uh, sand it doesn't matter so with that done you can jump back to unity inside unity i have disabled my player and my canvas just to make it easier for me to show you what's happening up here so the canvas and the player is not in the way and I've also removed show grid so that that grid doesn't interfere with what I want to show you. If we play this, you'll see that there are some water now. And it looks okay though, but we are not using the right sprites. Because if we look at these two, for example, this one would have to be zero. And this one would also have to be zero. And we need to look at all our neighbors around these tiles to figure out what to place there. 
because we are going to create an algorithm or some if statements that looks at all the neighbors based on what it just saw around the neighbors it will place the right tile or change the sprite so that means that we will have to write some code where we place everything in the whole world first and when we are done placing it we examine every single water tile and based on what's around the water tile we will place the right sprite because I can't check if there's earth here and water here if I haven't placed everything so when I place it I can't check that the optimal thing would be that I could just look at the tile when I place it and see what's around it but I can't do that because I need to place everything first and then I can check what's around it so that's what we're going to do so I'm just going to reset this so you can see what we're going to do well we are going to look at all neighbors of a tile so I'm going to draw something here and I know it's going to be very ugly because I'm drawing with the mouse but uh, I hope you get the idea so we are going to look at all these tiles here right now this is my center this is my main tile this is the tile we are looking at moment and this is the tile that we are examining that one with the red uh, dot in it it has some neighbors this tile and all the neighbors here are the squares around this tile and we need to make two for loops that run through these neighbors based on what we see in those neighbors we are going to make a string and that string is going to tell us if we need to put a corner tile or a side tile or whatever we need to put there so we are looking at them like this this is the first one it's called zero this is one two three four five six and seven okay this is the exact order we are looking at them in and this is very important because if I'm going to place a corner tile here I need to know the what's on position 1, position six, 6, position 3, and position 4. I don't really care about the others. This one could be whatever. This could be an earth tile as well, and I would still need to put a corner here. So I'm only interested in this one, this one, this one, and this one. So that's why it's important that we have the position, so I know which positions to look at. Okay. So when we examine all these, we are going to score them based on what's on them. So if we have water, we are going to score the W, this is a W, <laughs> and we're going to score this E because there's, it's empty or there's Earth, and we're going to score this one E as well, and this one is W. We're going to skip ourselves, then we're going to score this one E as well. This one is W, this is W, and this is W. So when we have looked at all our neighbors, we get a string, and that string. looks like this oh my god this is so ugly um w e e w e and w w w yeah so two four six eight yeah so these are this this is the string that we're looking at and in our case we need to look at this one this one this one and this one so this string here is actually something called an array and it's an array of characters so position 0 so I need to take position 1 so I need to look at this one I need to look at 3 0 1 2 3 there I need to look at 4 and I need to look at 6 so if I access this string with index 0 and index, uh, no, not 0, sorry, index 1, then <laughs> this is going to be a 1, 1, and um, what's 3, and 4, and 6. Then I know I get E, W, E, W. And based on that, I'm going to place a corner tile. So this might be confusing, but it's going to make sense when we start coding it. So this is one part of it. Another part is to finish the corners off, but we, we will see that later. So I hope you understand what we're doing here, kind of. And now we're going to write the code. So we need to open up the level manager script to write some code. And before we start, please don't get discouraged if it's hard to understand this code. This is kind of complex. 
but I really hope that you'll get a better understanding when we start writing it and we test it out so that you can see it actually works. So the first thing we have to do is to check all our neighbors. And remember that we need to place our whole map before we can examine our water tiles because we need to know what's next to each tile. So basically, I am going to create something called a dictionary. I'm not sure if you know what a dictionary is, so I am going to explain you what it is so that we know what we're doing instead of just writing some code we don't know. So a dictionary is a collection in C Sharp. And you might make a dictionary by writing the accessor, in our case it's private. Then you write dictionary. If you can't see dictionary, you need to include um, system.collections and system.collections generic. I think it's inside generic. So it should be this one here, up here. So I'll write dictionary. So a dictionary contains of two things. It con uh, contains here, yeah, I mean, it consists of two things, a key and a value. The key is what we use to access the dictionary. The value is what we get out when we use that key. So you can look at it as a lot of boxes and you have lots of different keys. When you use a specific key to open the box, a specific thing pops up to you. So the key in our case is going to be a position in our world. So we use a specific position to get access to a specific water tile. And that's exactly what we have here, right? We have a game world with lots of tiles with positions. So this one is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.1. Okay, so this one is in position 4.1. So if I would go to my dictionary and say, hey, can I please get what's on position 4.1? It should return you this tile here. And based on that, we can look at you know, this as position 4.1. So we can take everything around it to figure out what the, the positions around to figure out what their neighbors is. So that's what we're going to do. Well, right now we don't have anything for our positions. So we'll need to generate a new data type called the point. And that point is going to be used for our positions. That point down here, we can create it out here. We have our map element. Well, after the map element, we can make a public struct called point. So what's a struct? Well, a struct is something like a class, but it's more lightweight, and it's not a reference type. So basically, a reference type is changed when it's put through as parameters. That's hard to understand. Let's see here. Um, let's make an example. If I have a public... Uh, test, let's call that out, and it takes in a game object. Right, so public void test. You don't need to write this code, I'm just testing something. Game object geo, and I have my public void start function, and I have my game object geo, and I say test cc um, geo there. This code is not going to work, it's just explain, explaining what it is. So if it's a reference reference type, which all classes are, this is a class. Up here, our, our little man is a class, it's a reference type. Well, if I would say, if I would go in here, in my code here, and say geo.name equals um, enemy, like so, for example, then this game object I'm executing test C with gets his name changed to enemy which means this game object up here when this line of code has been executed has the name changed the name has changed up here because it's a reference type so when you give it into as a parameter it makes a reference to the original object which is this one and it changes the name of the original object because it's put in here and you have a, this one has a reference to this one. If it's a struct and it's not a refer re reference type, it's a value type, well, then it doesn't change the name of the original object because it's put in as a value, so it's copied, basically. So this line of code will not have effect on this line of code if it was a struct because it's not referencing the original object. So that's exactly what this struct is. So that was a little lesson in that. So it's not important in this case, but I just want to tell you so you know what we're doing. So this struct is going to be a point and it's going to have a position called um, my x. 
and it's going to have a position underneath called my y. The thing is, when you make a struct, we need to set the values at some point. So you need to make a constructor for the point. And on that constructor, we need to say this dot my x equals my x. Oh, sorry. Let's make an int x comma comma int y and x and this dot my y equals y. So this is a construct, right? Because it has the same name as the point. I can't remember if we explained that earlier when we made some other classes that didn't have a uh, mono behavior. We didn't. So I'll just explain it. a constructor is what's called when you create a new point. So if I didn't have this, let's say I deleted this, you don't need to delete it. And I somewhere in my code would say point p equals new point. Well, then I just create a point without giving it any values. But because I create a constructor, control C, give me a sec, like this, when I say p, when I say point p equals new point, then you can see there's a constructor called x and y, which can set these values for me. So this makes it possible for me to set the values because I create that constructor. With this done, I can save and I jump all the way up here where I created my dictionary. So as I said before, I need the key and the key in this case is going to be a point, which is a position. And what are we going to store in that position as a value? We are going to store game objects. Call it water. Water tiles new dictionary and this is the construction of the dictionary actually so i know this is a lot of new information lots of th theory um, i'm trying to explain you how it works if you don't understand 100 percent it's totally fine um, but i hope you get an idea about what we are actually doing so this is our dictionary tiles this means that i can go to my game and when we are done oh i need to fix the Compiler errors before we can. I think I fixed it. Let's just try to resave and run again. Might not have updated. Yeah, there we go. So that means when we're done, all the water here is going to be inside the dictionary. And that means a dictionary basically is a, like you can look at it as this, right? We have, I think I'm going to draw it down here. This, we have a key over here. And we have a value over here and on each position in here we have a water tile this is my dictionary very bad drawing but okay so on position what did we say zero one two three four point one so this one is called four point one well on this position well this tile down here is placed up here and that one below where we have this one it's 5.1 so on 5.1 5.1 oh this is so hard to read sorry 5.1 is written here well on that position the tile next to it is placed over here in the value so at some point if i want to get this specific tile if i want to exit this specific tile down here i can go to my water dictionary and say well i want to use the point 4.1 and it will return this tile to me that is placed on position 4.1. So, so let's say if I had something stored in water tiles and I want to access it, I could say water tiles dot, actually I can do like this, new point 4.1. And this would return the actual value of Oops, just need a square bracket on that position. So I could say game object. So this game object here would be equal to the actual game object right there by doing that line. Okay. So that's what we're trying to do. So now we have the dictionary. Well, we need to fill it up with water. And how do you do that? Well, we can simply do that. Yes, if new element dot my tile tag is water so if we are placing water then we say water tiles dot add game object that's it so 
if the tag is water, we can simply allow, uh, we can simply just add it to the dictionary. And basically, let's see, I have an error here. What does it, the argument? Oh, wait, yeah. So right now we're just adding the game object, but I need to add a position to it because right now I'm trying to save the game object, but we're not using a key to save it because we need a key when we store it so we can use that key to get it out again. So I need to say new point x comma y comma game object. So one more thing with a with a dictionary, the keys needs to be unique, and this means I can't store two uh, values in there with the same key. So if the key is one point one, I'm unable to store something else under one point one. I can only have one thing under one point one. But this line of code should add everything to our dictionary, and we can try if I put a breakpoint here, and I run the game attached to Unity, and I attach it, and then we can try to rerun the game. And you can see inside water tiles, we now have 49 tiles, and all of them are placed with a key. The first one is 4.1 as we looked at. Well, the next one is 5.1 and the next one is 6.2 and so on. So now we have all our dictionary or all our water in a dictionary. And that means we, I can use this key to get this value. Okay. So I hope you, you're getting a little familiar with this. So now we have the water saved. What then now? Well, we will have to check all the water around it because now we need to make sure we paste, place the right positions or the right tiles. So as you remember before on my awesome drawing where I wrote W and E, we will have to generate that string. So let's make a new function, public void called uh, tile check. So tile check, first of all, we need a string and we call it composition. This is the tile composition, and it's just empty from the get-go. So how do we look at all the tiles around us? Well, if we say that this is, here comes another drawing, if we say that this is our main tile, then we know if I look at this tile over here, my x position is minus 1, my y, y position is still 0, it's, it's the same. If I go up here though, my x position from this one is minus 1 and plus 1 on y. If I go up here, my x position is the same, it's 0, but my y position is plus 1, and so on. And down here, it would be x minus 1 and y minus 1. So based on that, I can look at everything around me. And that means I can go in here and make two for loops, uh, one for loop, actually, not two. Let's see. One called x and this one is going to do, go to 1 from minus 1. And this is very important. You have to say less or equal to 1. So it goes from minus 1, 0, and 1. If you forget the equal, then it's going to go from minus 1 to 0 and skip 1. Then we're going to make a new for loop with y. And it's going to go from less or equal again, 1. So minus 1 to 1. So these values will be minus 1, which means I can go minus 1 on my tile. So I go 1 to the left. So first time x is minus 1, we go from this one over here. Next time it's plus 1 maybe, it goes over here and so on. Or next time 0 is the same. So that's what these for loops are going to do. It's going to run through everything. So we need to make an if statement here. If x isn't not uh, zero or y isn't zero. So why do we do that? Well, this if statement makes sure that we don't check ourselves. The tile will never have to check if it's water on itself or not because there is water on it. So if, if it, both of them are zero, well then we are on the same tile. So that's why we need to make one of them not zero before we check if it's a tile that has water on it. So how do we check if there's water on the tile we are looking at at that position? Well, we can do that by making an if statement. So if water tiles that contains key, new point, point, 
Uh, we need a point here, up here. We need to know what we're checking. So point here is called current point. This is the current position we are at. That's this. This is the center tiles position. So if we are checking a point dot my x, sorry, my current point dot my x plus x and current point dot my y plus y. So we are on a point. We want to check what's on the left position. For example, we take the current point position plus x. Where if this is minus one, we will take the x position minus one, which is the one to the left. If it's plus one, we will take the one to the right. So this checks if the water tiles contains the key to the uh, point that is sitting around it. So if the water tiles contains the neighbor's key, well, that means that there is water on the neighbor no matter what. So we can say structure, or what we call composition, plus equal w. Else, we say structure, and I mean composition, don't know why I said structure, plus equal earth, or empty. So when this has been run, we will have a different composition for each tile called W, E, E, or whatever it's called. And based on that composition, we can place the right tile. Okay, so we can test this. So if we go down here, before we end the video, we can test that composition. So we can debug that lock our composition down here. And then we're going to create a new function we are going to use in the next video. I'll create in the next video public void check water not ping void just I think it could actually be private let's try to make private it's gonna make this private it doesn't change anything but so we have check water and this one is going to use tile string called composition equals tile check so tile check is actually going to return a string right here. It returns white right now, but it needs to return a string so we can use it in check, check water. And then we return, uh, we can do it after the debug, return composition. So the reason it needs to return a string is because this check water function is going to use it. And if we save it should, oh, we need a point here. So check water also needs a point. And that means we need to give tile check all the positions it needs. So we can make it for each loop with a key pair value, key value pair, I think it's called, with a point as the first one and the game object as the value. Yeah. And it's going to be called a tile. Sorry for the pause, I just, I'm just thinking what I should do in water tiles. Okay, so what does it do? Well, this runs through every single tile inside water tiles. So every time we find a tile inside or an object inside water tiles, we refer to that one with a variable called tile. And on that tile, we have a point, which is a key, and we have a value, which is the game object. So this is the data type we're using. And the reason that we're using this data type is because we used it when we created our dictionary, and that's why we need to use it here. Then I can take tile check and put it in here. Like so. And then I can take tile.key. Remember the key. The key is a point, as you can see. And my tile check wants a point, so we can check everything around it. So we get the tile we look at, we get the key, and we would use the tile check to check everything around it. So I save this, and I would go up to generate map. When I'm done with that, I can check water. It needs to be done when outside the for loop, right here. Then I save. And now we should see lots of strings in the console. We it's written, yay. So now you can see all the different strings in the console that we are going to use to place the right tiles in the next video.
yeah so that's what we are going to do in this video i think it went a little long now so it will take too long if we also need to place the right tiles so um i hope you enjoyed this i hope it's not too hard for you to understand this um and i hope it will make sense when we start placing the actual um actual water tiles um it will be easy when we have when we have the code in place everything is going to be easy for creating water everywhere in your level so thank you very much for watching Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that InScope Studios is a community found page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.